So welcome to Linear Algebra for Machine Learning course. We will be discussing the basics of Linear Algebra and uh, their Python implementation so that you can use them for machine learning. Okay, so this course I have designed for the students who want to take up machine learning and usually Linear Algebra is a prerequisite for machine learning. So that's the main goal for designing this course. And this course is for you if you have some knowledge of Linear Algebra. Okay, so at some point of time you have learned it in your high school or uh, during your initial years of your college and it's been a long time and now you want to take up machine learning and you want to refresh some important parts of linear algebra so that you don't face any trouble during machine learning. Okay, and this course is not for you if you want to start learning linear algebra from scratch. Okay, so I cannot really cover all the concepts in linear algebra in just an hour or so. So if you want to take up a complete linear algebra course, then this course is not for you. Or if you want to learn all the uh, all the concepts in linear algebra, then again, this, uh, this course is not for you because I'm only covering the parts which are most frequently used in machine learning, okay? And uh, if you don't know Python, then I'll not say like you should drop out, but you will face a lot of trouble understanding a lot of this course because this course is not, I'm, I'm not just discussing the basics of linear algebra, I'm also discussing how to implement those things in Python. Okay, so if you don't know any basic Python, then you might face a lot of troubles. Okay, so let's see what all things we'll be covering in this course. So we'll start with some very basic stuff like uh, vectors and matrices and uh, basic matrix operations like how to do uh, multiplications and uh, matrix additions and uh, scalar multiplications and all those things. Uh, in Python, okay? So uh, then we'll talk about uh, rank of a matrix. It's a very theoretical discussion. Uh, we'll talk about how to use matrices to solve linear equations. So both theory and practical parts will be there in that topic. Uh, we'll talk about the change of basis, uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So those are like very important theoretical concepts which you will need for your machine learning courses. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, diagonalization uh, norms and traces, right? So diagonalization is kind of very important part in the machine learning. So sometimes you will have to do diagonalization and uh, norms and traces, you'll be frequently using them. So it's uh, very easy to learn. It's a very light topics, but yeah, uh, they're important. So all those concepts we'll be covering in this course along with their Python implementation. So let's get started. Okay, so we will start our discussion with the very basic stuff, which is vectors and matrices. Okay, so what is a vector? So for our case, our understanding, what we are going to do is we'll see vectors as directed arrows in a space. So what is this space? This space is particularly called a vector space. So let's start with a directed arrow. Okay, so we have, let's say this directed arrow. So this is a vector, okay? And this, and uh, th there is a space in which this vector is, and that space is called a vector space. So, what is this vector space? So, uh, this entire vector space, it, it is just basically, you know, uh, addition and uh, or, or rather linear combination of a couple of vectors, right? So, this is a, this is a two-dimensional vector space. So, I can basically have one vector here, another vector here, and then stretch this vector and uh, stretch this vector to some extent and then add those two vectors. If I do those operations, then basically I can reach to any vector in this entire vector space, right? so, so this entire two dimensional grid. So that is my vector space. And this particular two vectors, right? so in over here, which we just, what we just saw, which is basically in this case, it is one zero and zero one. Those are my basis for this two dimensional vector space. Okay, so the, I can basically reach to any vector by just stretching and adding these two vectors. So if I had to reach this vector, then what I'll do is I'll just simply uh, stretch this vector up till here uh, and uh, stretch uh, this vector till here and then add those two vectors together and I'll get this vector, right? So how do I get this vector? So basically you, you know how the uh, vector additions work, right? So it is uh, when I put one vector, I, I want to add one vector to the other vector, it's simple as uh, just putting the tail of this one vector, other one of those vector on the head of this first vector and that's it, right? So you will basically land on the uh, vector addition part, right? So that, that basically is the vectors and the vector space. 
So, um, of course, you probably know about what vectors are. This is just to make the understanding slightly more clear. Okay, so now that we know about what uh, vectors are and what the vector space is, so what exactly are the matrices? So matrices are a linear transformation of this vector space. So what, what do I mean by linear transformation? So earlier I had uh, uh, a vector space which was basically defined by these two basis vectors, right? And you, you know that I can basically have any kind of a basis, right? So I can even have a completely different basis, let's say something like this and something like, something like this. Even with these two vectors, I can cover every vector in the vector space. So this is also a valid basis. So matrix is something that is going to transform my entire uh, vector space into something that is uh, another vector space, which is represented by another set of vectors. In, in a way, we can even see that like, okay, I'm transforming this vector, this first uh, basis vector into this uh, vector and transforming this other vector into this vector, right? So it is basically I'm stretching and uh, doing some rotation of these vectors and I'm obtaining a completely new vector space. So those kind of transformations are linear transformation. So what I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to stretch any vector or rather stretch the entire grid line of this vector as much as I can, as, as much as I want, or even squeeze it if I want, as long as every grid line is equally stretched or squeezed, okay? So that's what I'm allowed to do. And the other thing that I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to rotate it, right? So I can allow, uh, I can rotate basically this uh, basis vector to some other vector and I can obtain other set of vectors. What I'm not allowed to do is I'm not allowed to transform the origin. Right, so the origin remains the same. So here uh, I'm allowed. Um, let's uh, let's rather I, I drew it over here, but let's let's just say that uh, this new vector space is right here. Right, so this is something that the matrix uh, can do. Right, so it transforms this one to this one and the second one to this one. Right, so this is what I'm allowed to do. So the origin remains at the same place. Origin doesn't move. Okay. So that's uh, basically um, matrices, right? So how, what, what exactly is this matrix? So it's basically, uh, I can see that uh, each column of this uh, transformation, right? Each column of this matrix, it's basically the transformation of the basic basis vector of this vector space, right? So for, for, for what, what kind of transformation am I talking about when I'm talking about uh, this kind of uh, new representation? So it is kind of very easy to find out, right? So it is basically saying that uh, my uh, x-axis went to, let's just say this is four and this is uh, two. So my, my x-axis uh, went to, went to, went to four and two and my y-axis, so x component become minus one, y component become, y component remained as it is. So y component is still one x component over here, let's say it is minus one. So this is uh, minus one, okay? So this is this uh, matrix transformation, which is transforming this vector into this one and this vector into this one, okay? So that was the basics of uh, vectors and matrices. What we are going to do now is uh, we are going to talk about uh, Python implementations of it. So for your machine learning courses, all your images, data, and text will be converted into matrix for any kind of manipulation or any kind of processing, right? So that's why you need to understand what vectors are, what matrices are, and all sorts of operations on them. Okay, so when, you, when it comes to implementing all these things in Python, so it's very simple, right? So first of all, we are going to need some functions. So we are going to use a bunch of libraries. So one of them is uh, NumPy. Okay, so we are going to import NumPy as NP. And in the NumPy, there is another module which is called linear algebra. So we'll often be like very frequently using this uh, module linear algebra. So we are also going to import that uh, particular module as LA just as a shortcut, right? So let's just go ahead and do that. And that's it. So those are imported. So now that uh, we have imported all those things, so defining a row vector is kind of very easy. So what we need to do is numpy.array. So numpy.array would basically imp uh, define a row vector. So here I have defined a two dimensional row vector, but you can actually define a row uh, vector in just one dimension also. 
I the reason why I define it in two dimension is so that I can show you the shape of it, right? So this is the way you show the shape of it. So I'm defining it uh, uh, a row vector, which is basically like it will it is going to look like this, and I'm printing it, and I'm also going to print its shape, right? So the shape is uh, one cross three because like yeah, uh, the that's how the row vectors are defined. Uh, the column vector uh, shape would be three cross one, right? So that's uh, what we are going to do next. So there are a bunch of ways to define the column vector. So one of the ways that you define a row vector and then take the transpose. So how do you take the transpose? You just do dot t at the end. And uh, if you do that, th this is what you get it, right? So it uh, it is again like a two dimensional column vector, which is five, seven, nine over here. And the shape of this vector is three cross one. So instead of, uh, if you don't want to take the transpose, you can actually even put uh, this directly in the numpy dot array function, right? So uh, in over here in the two brackets, if you can, if you write your brackets like this, then also it's a column vector. So that ends our uh, topic on vectors and matrices. Let's move on to the next talk. Okay, so the next topic that we are going to cover is a bigger topic, it's a matrix operation, but it's kind of very easy topic. So mostly we will be focusing on the Python implementations of those different types of matrix operation. So let's uh, get started. So how do you define a matrix? So a very simple way is uh, the way we define the vector. It's uh, numpy dot array, and then you put the uh, two dimensional vector. So if you want to define uh, two dimensional vector, right? So the two dimensional matrix. So this is how you can define uh, the matrix. Uh, if you want to define a matrix which has all the entries as one, so you can actually do it with uh, a particular function which is called numpy.ones and then just uh, pass the shape of the matrix. So here it, I'm passing three by three and it will fill it up as all the, ex it will be exactly look like this type of a matrix, right? So let's uh, try to see. So as I said, it is a three by three matrix filled with all ones and the shape is three by three. Okay, so let's uh, define another matrix, which is matrix B, which is two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six. Uh, this is how it's done. So the scalar matrix multiplication is the very easiest thing to do. All you have to do is just uh, wherever you have stored the matrix, you just multiply it with a scalar, right? So phi, the way the way you usually multiply scalars, that's also that kind of also works for the matrix, right? So the result will be this phi multiplied to each and every entry of this matrix A and all the entries will be five, right? So that's uh, what we want. That's basically the scalar multiplication of the matrix. Now, uh, matrix addition is kind of uh, very simple. So we can basically add matrices as long as they have the same shape and uh, by adding their corresponding elements, right? So how this is how we do it. So if you want to add two matrix A and B, then the each entry will be uh, the corresponding a entry in A plus the corresponding entry in B, right? So uh, it's also as simple as uh, doing the mul uh, scalar multiplication. All you have to do is just matrix A plus matrix B, right? So this Python will figure it out that the, both of them are uh, numpy arrays of uh, equal shape and everything, and it will do the addition for you. So uh, the first matrix was uh, all ones, and the second matrix was two, four, six. If you just add them together, then you get three, five, seven. Okay, so that was the matrix. So you, I think we have already seen how to do the transpose for vectors. So it also kind of works for matrices, right? So here we have uh, four by three matrix and the transpose, the way I can take it is just dot apply dot T at the end, right? So that's how you take the transpose. So I'm going to print the uh, matrix A before transpose and uh, its shape. And then after I'm going to print the transposed matrix later on, right? So right there. So initially it was one, 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 uh, one, two, and three were in the rows and after the transpose, they become the columns, right? And the shape was previously three by four, now it is four by three. So that was uh, matrix uh, transpose. The matrix multiplication, probably you have already seen this before. This is how you define one entry for matrix multiplication. And how do you do it? It's basically, uh, this this entry in the row will multiply it with this entry in the column and then this entry in the row will multiply with this entry in the column and that's how you obtain the first entry in the 
resultant matrix, right? So probably you have already uh, uh, seen how to do the matrix multiplication. Uh, and of course, like it is not as simple as doing just, uh, you know, multiplication over here, you need to use this dot function. So you use this numpy dot dot. So it's basically a dot product of these two matrices and that will give you the matrix multiplication. Of course, you need to make sure that uh, the shapes uh, are kind of correct. So if uh, over here, I am, I have a matrix A, which is uh, three by two. And here I have another matrix B, which is also three by two. And uh, the shapes are not compatible here, right? For matrix multiplication. So uh, when we have uh, matrices, we have uh, over here three by two and the other matrix also has three by two. So these shapes are not compatible for direct dot product, right? So this, this entries needs to need to be same. So here it is two, here it is three. And uh, if I try to do the matrix multiplication, I'll hit an error. So that's why this entire code block is in a try and uh, accept kind of a, a block. Right. So let's see. So when I try to multiply a, this matrix A and matrix B, which has say three by two and three by two, then uh, instead of getting the result, so this is where when I try to multiply, I hit an exception and I end up printing the shapes are incompatible for matrix multiplication. Okay. So matrix vector multiplication also like the same thing, the way you do matrix matrix, you can also do the matrix vector multiplication. It's again like the exact same function dot function. So here I have a matrix uh, A, which is uh, four by three. And I have a vector B, which is um, three by one, okay? So this, this shapes are kind of compatible because uh, four by three and three by one. So three is common between them, right? So here you see that. Uh, so that's, uh, that will result in a four by one uh, vector, okay? So let's see what the vector is. And this time I don't hit any exception. I just get the result uh, and the shape is four by one, right? So this is the resulting uh, vector and that's how we do things. Okay, so the last topic is the random matrix. So a lot of times you will need to initialize matrices in, uh, in machine learning. So a good way to initialize things is uh, initialize the matrix with random matrix, right? So we already saw how to define matrices which has all entries as ones. And this is a particular function, which is numpy.random.rand. And it will take the shape as, uh, as the argument. And it will give you a matrix, which is which has of uh, this particular shape. In this case, it is three by two, filled with all the random entries. So random entries are uh, between zero and ones, right? So this, uh, this is the one, this is the way, one of the way to uh, define a completely random matrix. And if you want to uh, play with random numbers and you still want to uh, repro uh, reproducibility in your results, right? So this is how you do it. You basically fix the seed. So if I, let's say if I run this cell again, I might not get the same entries. I'll get completely different entries. Let's see, right? So I see, you see uh, here it was 0 0.60. Now it is 0 0.92 and every entry is different. But if I do this one where I define the seed, then I'll always get exactly the same, uh, same random numbers, right? So let's try it again. Uh, it will not, uh, hopefully it will not change. And that's it, yeah. So uh, when, as long as you keep uh, setting the seed, it is uh, deterministic, but it is still random, okay? So uh, now uh, we can also, we have already seen this part. We can actually always uh, store this kind of uh, matrix in, in a variable and then print and uh, even like find out its type. So type will be numpy.ntra. So that's uh, basic matrix operation in Python and that's uh, that's uh, the end of this uh, topic. Okay, so next we are going to talk about uh, rank of a matrix, okay? So um, we have already seen that a matrix is a linear transformation of this entire, uh, of our entire uh, vector space, right? So sometimes uh, the matrix can transform the entire vector space into a lower dimensional vector space. So let's see an example, okay? so. Let's take example, for example, this matrix, which is uh, transforming our uh, X axis basis to two, four and Y, uh, y axis basis to uh, one, zero, two, three, six. So let's see how it will look like. Okay, so let's say I have uh, 
my x axis basis and i have my uh, y axis basis over here okay so if i multiply uh, if i transform this one into 2 4 so let's try to see where the 2 4 would land okay so this is one so this is roughly two and this is one actually let's uh, let's actually draw it out right so that makes things easier okay so this is uh, use this uh, this is one say this is this this is one this is two this is three and uh, yeah i think for x only i will need three for y i need actually up to six right so uh, this is uh, two three four five and uh, six right so this uh, should be approximately two four and this uh, should be approximately uh, 3 6 okay so now let's uh, see where uh, this transformations are taking us right so x is being getting transformed to 2 4 which is right over here and y is getting transformed to 3 6 so this y is getting transformed to this uh, 3 6 now you can see that this two transformed vectors are exactly in the same length so if i add and multiply uh, uh, sorry if i stretch these vectors and add them together i can only get points which are already in on this line right so i for example cannot really get a point which is over here right so no matter how i uh, stretch these two vectors and add them i will only get points which are which are over here right so on this on this line or sometimes even the negative part so this uh, entire matrix has transformed everything into a one dimensional vector space right so that's why it is called a matrix with rank 1 okay so we can can, can see another example where uh, we have kind of a similar uh, transformation but uh, uh, here it is transforming x to 2 6 so this is roughly 2 6 let's let's draw it out here right here yeah and the y-axis is going to 3 4 right so this is roughly where the 3 4 is so here it is 3 and here it is 4 and uh, yeah so that's that's 3 4 and you can see that this blue transformation is still a complete vector space right it's still a two-dimensional vector space so if I uh, stretch these two vectors and uh, add them I can still cover every point uh, in this entire grid line okay so this is still a, a vector space which has dimension 2 so this is why the rank of this uh, matrix is 2 okay so and that's what I'm, I'm writing over here so the rank of the square matrix is the maximum uh, so okay let's let's ignore this part for now but uh, rank 1 matrix will basically transform uh, the entire space on a line rank 2 will transform things on a plane uh, rank can will basically transform things on an n-dimensional box sp um, uh, space okay so that's uh, the idea behind uh, matrix transformation and there is also something called a rank zero matrix which is basically transforms everything into this origin right so if everything is transformed to this origin then that uh, that matrix has rank zero so uh, i guess you can all see that there is only one type of a matrix which has rank zero which is basically if all my entries uh, are zero Right, so this has uh, rank zero. Okay, so there is another. Uh, there, there is a uh, way to measure the rank. It's basically how many independent rows or how many independent columns do I have for an n cross n matrix. Right. So over here, uh, I transformed x to two four and y to three six. Okay. So these are not really linearly independent. Right. So if you if you multiply uh, this by by let's say 3 by 2 right in that case you will obtain this exact same uh, same interest 3 and 6 multiply 2 by 3 by 2 you will get 3 multiply 4 by 3 by 2 you will get 6 right so these are not really linearly uh, independent you can get one uh, from the other just by stretching or uh, squeezing okay so 
if I have, in this case, they are linearly independent. So maximum number of linearly independent columns over here are two. That's why the rank of this matrix is two. And over here, the maximum number of independent columns is just one. So the, uh, the rank of uh, this matrix is just one. Okay, so you can also, uh, if you want, you can even see uh, instead of uh, independent columns, you can also take a look at independent rows. So here it is two, three is uh, half of uh, four, six, right? So over here, there is no linear dependency of uh, uh, these two rows. That's why the rank of uh, those, uh, this matrix is two, this matrix is one. And if uh, the rank is less than uh, the dimension, right? So over here, the dimension is n. And if the rank is less than n, then we'll call them as singular matrix. Okay, so we'll see why, we, why we'll call them as singular matrix and why, what are the implications and everything. Okay, so that uh, covers the topic about uh, rank of the matrix and uh, Okay, so now that we know about uh, rank of the matrix, now it's time to look at uh, how to solve equations using matrix. Okay, so let's get into it. So what we want to solve is some this kind of an equation, ax equal to b, right? So b over here is a vector, x is an unknown vector that we want to find, and a is the matrix. So in other words, what we are trying to do is that uh, we have a linear transformation uh, of a matrix in the form of a matrix. So let's say that this uh, was my uh, original vector space basis. So one zero one zero one, and I applied some transformation A on it, and uh, I want to find out. Uh, uh, let's say I applied some transformation, and after the transformation, things went uh, uh, x axis went uh, over here, and y axis went uh, over here. Okay, and I want to find out what is the vector in my red uh, vector space that went to over here right so that's what i want to find out so this is my resulting vector b that i have received after the transformation so i want to find out what was the original vector in the original uh, original vector space which is uh, let's say uh, use another color maybe over here right so this is the one that I want to find and let's say this is X okay so this is just for the example uh, if you apply this kind of a transformation X might not end up over here but that's what we want to find out what what which one of this vector will land on to be when I apply this transformation right so that's what we want to find out so in other words what we are doing is that uh, we are applying an inverse transformation of this uh, uh, of this original transformation, right? So we want to find out uh, uh, some matrix which uh, will do the inverse transformation. We'll put back uh, this one to this x uh, one uh, one zero and this one to this uh, zero one. And if we do that, then we will know that uh, which uh, this b will basically land on uh, this x, right? So that's what uh, is uh, solving the equation. So that was about solving the equation, but sometimes we might not be able to have a unique solutions for our equation, right? So earlier we saw a kind of a matrix transformation which had, uh, so earlier we saw a matrix which had, uh, which had a rank which was uh, less than two, right? So it, uh, let's say that uh, uh, everything was transformed into this line. Right, so uh, x axis is here and uh, y was transformed to here. And uh, we want to find out uh, what is the vector that, uh, that basically landed over here, right? So over here. So there are many possible solutions over that because uh, there are many different ways I can actually stretch and add these two vectors which will reach over here, right? So that's uh, that's kind of very hard to find out the inverse transformation in the sense that uh, I, I don't have any inverse transformation of this kind of uh, matrix transformation. Because why? Because it is uh, it has a lower dimensional vector space. So everything has collapsed to this uh, single space, right? So this 
this this could be like uh, uh, this vector or it could be uh, another vector over here all of them might uh, land over here so more than one vector can actually land on this vector right so if you want to see it in a simpler example let's uh, try to do that so for example uh, this is my original vector space and let's say my transformation is very simple all i do is just stretch the x axis by 2 two times and uh, squeeze y axis to origin right so y is 0 0 or let's let's not actually squeeze the y axis like let's uh, uh, say that uh, yeah the y axis is basically squeezed to 0 okay so everything is transformed into this so clearly this vector over here will land on this vector or not this vector actually i just i have to stretch uh, the x component by two right so it will basically uh, land over here but so is this vector because both of them have exactly the same x component and their y component is clashed down so this is also going to land uh, over here where i just uh, stretched out my x part and collapsed my y part so which one of these two is my unique answer so i don't have a unique answer right so both of them are valid answers both of, if you apply this kind of a transformation then both of these vectors will land to this uh, vector and that's why my answer is not unique so in other words the inverse transformation does not exist okay so um, that's uh, that's what we want to study which is basically like if my uh, matrix a is uh, reducing my rank like it has a lower rank or rather in other words it is if it is singular then i may not have unique solutions to this equation okay so if i have uh, a, a matrix with uh, full rank in that case i can always find the inverse transformation and when i can find the inverse transformation i can just uh, you know do this kind of uh, algebraic operation where i multiply with the inverse transformation on the both both the side and uh, a inverse a will uh, result in the identity matrix which is denoted by in and on the right hand side i have my uh, vector right so any a inverse is another transformation which is of the same dimension and uh, yeah that's how you get the answer x okay so uh, let's now now that we have understood the theory concept now let's try to do things in python right so if you want to solve an equation with two unknowns right so my x will be uh, over here it is x and y and my matrix is 2 3 and 3 2 right so this is how i have defined my matrix which is 2 3 and 3 2 and my uh, my x vector is a column vector which is x and y right so uh, and my b vector over here is 8 and 7 which is again a uh, uh, over here it is given like this but yeah um, it, it's a column vector right so uh, this is matrix a vector b and now i have to i want to find the inverse of matrix a how do i find the inverse it's uh, it's something that we imported earlier which is linear algebra so it is in numpy if you recall it correctly and the linear algebra module has this i and v inverse function if you apply it it will find the a inverse okay so once you have the inverse all we had to do is uh, a inverse times b which is numpy dot dot and uh, that's how you find out the uh, unknown vector which is x so if you want to verify it you can do mat uh, matrix multiplication over here matrix vector multiplication with dot which is matrix a times x and you will get the answer as b which is 8 7 that's what we were looking for okay so that was uh, one way of solving the equation let's see another way which is slightly more easier so let's say we have a uh, let's say we have an equation with three unknowns so we have a matrix which is 3 by 3 and vector which is uh, 3 by 1 and instead of doing all these operations where i do linear algebra dot inverse and then um, do the dot product i can do all of those operations in just single line i can do linear algebra dot solve and then pass on my matrix and the vector when i do that right okay so first i have to do this and then i do this so then i get my x 
right, which is minus one, two, and three. And you can do even the verification, which is a times x, which will give you the minus one, seven, one minus seven and five, which was the original vector b. Okay, so we have already seen the limitations uh, for finding a inverse. So this is not uh, getting out correctly. Okay, so if a has if a is uh, in by n matrix, and if the determinant is zero, right? So the determinant is zero. It happens when the a is singular, right? So determinant of the matrix, what is it? Basically, it is uh, the area of the transform square. Okay, so let's 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 try to understand that part. Okay, so let's say we have uh, this i over here and j over here, and this defines a a square, a unit square, right? So it is basically uh, this square. This has area one, right? And if I transform this uh, matrix, then transform this vector space uh, to something else. Let's say. Uh, with this one and this one right and this defines another square and it has a different area right so this different area is going to be my determinant of this matrix right and what happens if my matrix is singular well basically it is uh, uh, pushing everything into a single line so in that case all the vectors uh, let's say are collapsed uh, to this single line Right. In that case, I don't have any square left. So uh, in that way, my determinant of that matrix will be zero. So that's another way of saying that the matrix is uh, singular. And when the matrix is sing singular, it is basically non-invertible. So when you cannot uh, invert a matrix, then this way of uh, solving the equations will not work. And not all the matrix will have the inverse. Okay. In that case, you have multiple possible answers or sometimes even no possible answers. Okay. So that was uh, solving the equations with matrix. Now let's move on to other stuff. Okay, so now we are going to talk about uh, change of basis, right? So uh, earlier we had some vector. Let's let's draw some vector. Uh, so let's first uh, draw our basis vectors. It is i, it is one zero and uh, zero one, and we had uh, some vector. Let's uh, call it one. Two, three, and one. Uh, let's let's keep it simple, right? Let's call it uh, two, one, over here. Okay. So this has uh, coordinates, which is uh, given by um, two, one, right? It's a nice little vector with coordinate two, one. And uh, let's say I want to keep this vector as it is. But I don't want to use uh, this uh, grid lines defined by this uh, vector space, uh, this basis to define its coordinates. Let's say I want to use something else to define its coordinates. I can always uh, have multiple different bases, right? So for example, let's say uh, I want a new grid space, which is uh, defined by this one and uh, Let's keep the y same, right? This one. In this case, what is the coordinates of this vectors of according to the blue one, blue uh, basis? It will be according to the blue one. It is one one, right? It is still the same vector. It's just that I'm I'm using a different basis to define its coordinates, right? And I can do it for many different uh, bases, right? So uh, let's say. If I have a completely weird basis, uh, how do I define completely weird basis? Let's. Uh, I'm kind of lacking colors now, so you get the point, right? So basically, let's say uh, I have uh, this and this as my basis, then I don't know what the coordinates of this vector in this uh, type of a basis representation. So let's say if you want to find out, find out, then how do we do that? It's uh, not very hard to do things, right? So it's basically like. Uh, change of uh, language right so earlier we are speaking the language of one zero and zero one now we want to speak a language of something else right so in let's say let's take a particular example here in r2 i am using my standard basis which is one zero and zero one and the vector four five 
is something that uh, I want to, it's, uh, it's of my interest for this example, right? So it can be written as linear combination of those two vectors as like I do four times this first vector and five times this second vector and then add them together, then I get the four five. But let's say if I want to use another basis, which is two one and minus one zero, then how would I represent them as, uh, how would I write them, uh, write the new coordinates of uh, this four five vector? So again, I have to do this thing, like let's say their coordinates are A and B, then it is basically saying that I multiply this first basis vector with A and multiply the second basis vector with B and then add them together and I get four five, right? So it is exactly same as doing this kind of a thing where I, this is this is like a vector, vec, uh, matrix vector uh, multiplication where the matrix is two one over here. This is my first uh, uh, basis uh, vector and the second is minus one zero. So it is minus one zero over here. That's my second uh, uh, basis vector. And that, that defines my uh, some transformation of, uh, of vectors and that is exactly multiplied with a and b and now it is exactly same thing as solving the equation right so i can solve this uh, uh, equation and i can get my coordinates a and b so all i have to do is just find the inverse of this transformation and once i do it i just multiply it with four phi and i get five six right so you can even verify it that if i multiply this two one by phi and minus one zero by six and then add them together i get the vector four phi so that's how uh, you can find the uh, new uh, vector. Like uh, this is the same, it's basically the same vector, but the new coordinates of the same vector, it will look as phi six if I use this basis system, right? So if you want to remember a shortcut from, if you want to move from standard basis system to a non-standard basis system, then you find out, you basically define the matrix transformation as uh, of, of the non-standard, uh, non-standard uh, basis uh, vector space and then take the inverse of it and multiply it with the original vector, right? So that's how you find uh, the new coordinates when you change the basis. Okay, so next we are going to talk about uh, eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors. So what are they? So the concept is very simple. So let's, let's take a look at this uh, matrix transformation, okay? So let's again begin with our standard basis, which is one zero, uh, zero one, okay? And uh, X is going to minus three, minus two. So let's let's actually see where it is going, okay? So X is going to minus three, minus two. So minus one, okay, let's actually do the grid lines first. Like do the points first, okay. I should have drawn more space on this side, but okay. So this is minus three, this is minus two, and probably it will land somewhere over here. Over here, okay. So now, let's see. So my X goes uh, over here, and Y basically stays as it is, which is uh, one zero. And uh, let's say uh, we have a vector which is one one, okay. So which is right over here, one and one. And uh, if you apply this uh, matrix transformation, then where would it land, right? So it is minus three times uh, one and one times one, so it is uh, minus two. So x component is minus two, and y component is uh, minus two times one and zero times one, so it is also minus two. So that is going to land at minus two minus two right so that is uh, over here okay so now what is uh, special about this vector is that uh, when i did this uh, matrix transformation it did not get uh, rotated it only got uh, stretched right so in this case uh, we can say that uh, it it got stretched by minus two, or it basically uh, changed the direction to the completely opposite, and uh, it uh, it's completely changed the direction, and uh, it got stretched by two units, right? So it is still exactly on the same line, right? So let's let's actually even draw the same line. 
right? So you can see, like this, hasn't been rotated. So this is this vector one one was in this line before, and it is still in the same line. So that's a special type of vector which we'll call it call an eigenvector. And this uh, minus two unit, right, by which it was stretched, is called uh, is called uh, eigenvalue for this eigenvector, right? So this is not a unique eigenvector. Like there are many possible eigen. In fact, like every vector on this line is an eigenvector, right? It those those, those those these vectors will only get stretched when I apply this transformation. It will never get rotated. So this will never happen. Like so, for example. Let's say if I had a different vector, uh, let's let's use the green color only. Okay. So let's say if I had this vector, uh, then this might not remain on the same place. So what is this two one, right? So if I move uh, over here, if I had two one, then it will go to minus three times two, that is minus six, and let's let's actually write it down. Okay, it is easier. So if I had a vector which is two one. And if I multiply it with this matrix, then it is minus three times two, that is minus six, and one times one, that is one. So that will go to minus five, and this one, the second coordinate, will go to uh, minus two, right? So minus two times, uh, so no, one, not minus two, it's minus two times two, that is minus four, and zero times one, that is zero. So it will go to minus four, right? So minus five, minus four. So here it is two one, and over here it will be uh, somewhere it is minus five, and somewhere down the line it is minus four, and is you can see you can you can even see that it is completely going to be a completely different angle, right? So it, it is no longer the same line. The same line would have been uh, over here or here or somewhere else, right? So somewhere over here, but uh, yeah. So that's the point. Like the and this vector is not that special. So uh, this vector one one was special for this matrix transformation. So it's called this eigenvector of this uh, matrix. Okay. So how do we find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues? So on, if I have to find things on a paper, then this is how I'll do it. I'll just write down that equation, which is I apply this matrix transformation for that vector, and that vector will remain it itself, except that it will be stretched by a by a scalar, which is lambda, right? And if I have to solve this equation. Then I basically move this uh, lambda v on the left hand side, and uh, I just say that instead of writing lambda, I'll just put it as lambda i, and this is another matrix. And if I try to solve this equation, right? And I want to find uh, so obviously v equal to zero is a solution for this equation, but I want to find other solutions which are non-zero vectors. And if I want to find that, then it means that this uh, entire matrix has to be singular, right? Otherwise, uh, this equation will have a unique solution. So when I say that this has to be singular, that means that the determinant is zero. When I equate the determinant to zero, I'll get a characteristic uh, polynomial, basically some polynomial in terms of lambda. And when I solve it, I get uh, different values for lambda. And then I put it back on this equation and I find uh, a bunch of vectors that are satisfying that kind of an equation, right? So that's like the normal procedure. But if you want to do things with uh, Python, then it's slightly easier, right? So let's say we have this matrix here. Right, so uh, which is uh, defined by a three by three transformation, and if I want to calculate these eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this uh, matrix, then all I have to do is just call this linear algebra dot eig. So this function will return two things at the same time. It will return me eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's do this. We'll do this, and then we print the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and this is my eigenvectors and. Uh, uh, these are my eigenvalues, corresponding eigenvalues, right? So each column is an eigenvector. So this is one eigenvector, this is another eigenvector, and so on and so forth. And if I want to uh, like uh, take a look at the particular one, so I just uh, I, I can do it just uh, by doing this, where the column is one and the rows are all, all the rows. Then uh, yeah, that is this one, right? So this is minus point five five eight five minus point five five eight five and uh, point uh, Six one two six, so on so forth, right? So we can even verify it. Like if you do this uh, part, which is a times v, so this is matrix a times that vector v. So I'm for this one, I'm taking the the very first eigenvector, which is this one, right? So eigenvector zero, 
this gives me this minus 4.4 minus 4.4 and minus 7.02 on the right hand side we have this lambda times v so the corresponding lambda over here it was 9.38 right and if i multiply uh, this uh, 9.38 with this eigenvector then i get the same answer right as here so that was eigenvectors and eigenvalues see you in the next videos Okay, so now we are going to talk about uh, an important concept. It's called uh, diagonalization, right? So this is sometimes uh, used in the machine learning courses. So let's see what it is, right? So we have a matrix A and I want to write the matrix as uh, this kind of a form, right? So this is like one transformation, but I want to break it down into three different transformations. So one is I apply P transformation, then I apply D transformation, and then I apply the inverse of this P transformation. And what is special about this D? So a D, it has to be a diagonal matrix, right? So it is basically only stretching my axis. It is not rotating at all, okay? So first of all, let's see why this kind of uh, diagonalization is even needed, right? So it is, why, why, what kind of uh, properties that I'm uh, achieving by doing this kind of diagonalization? So let's say if I manage to do it uh, this way, like I managed to find this PDP inverse, and let's say I want to apply, uh, I want to find the cube of A, right? So I want to find A cube, or rather apply this A, mat A transformation three times. Then how do I do this? I just write uh, this, th this term three times, right? So it is P, D, P inverse once, then P, D, P inverse two times, and then P, D, P inverse third time and see what happens over here. So P inverse and P cancel will cancel out, right? So this is inverse of P. So this will become my identity. And over here also, this two parts will cancel out, right? So what I'll be left with is P, there is one D, there is second D and there is third D. So there is D cube and this P has canceled out. Uh, this P has also canceled out uh, and last, I'm left with is P inverse, okay? Right, so uh, see how easy it is to find the Q of this matrix, right? So I have this matrix P, I have this matrix T, and D is a diagonal matrix, right? So finding the cube of diagonal matrix is very, very easy, right? So it's basically saying that, uh, so, so diagonal matrix looks something like there are some non-zero numbers, A, B, C, and so on and so forth in the diagonal, and every other numbers are zero, right? So if I want to find the square of it, so all I have to do is just write it as a square, b square, c square. If I want to find the cube, then I just do a cube, b cube, c cube, that's a d cube, right? So that's, that's, it's that easy, right? So it makes a lot of this kind of operations so much easier. So that's why that kind of uh, writing a matrix in, in this kind of form is kind of uh, important and useful, okay? So how do we find this kind of a diagonalization? It's by using this, uh, one of the ways by using this eigenvectors and eigenvalues, right? So while what, what I'll do is I'll start with uh, finding its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So it, if it exists, then I'm kind of happy. Then I have a way to diagonalize this matrix. If it does not, then probably I have to find uh, other ways, right? So it, or maybe it may not be even diagonalizable. Okay, so let's say we, we find out all the eigenvectors and eigenvalues and I put all my eigenvectors in this S matrix, right? So earlier we saw this kind, that kind of a matrix where we had all the eigenvectors in one matrix and I have, I just call that matrix as S and uh, I have another matrix. So this S matrix has the columns are my eigenvalue, eigenvectors, okay? And the corresponding eigenvalues, which are lambda one to lambda n, let's say it's an n-dimensional space, those are in the diagonal of this uh, this capital lambda matrix. So how, how does this uh, lambda matrix look like, capital lambda, right? So this lambda is basically, the first entry is lambda one, the second diagonal entry is lambda two, and so on and so forth, right? Only the diagonal entries are there, but the other numbers are zeros. All, all, all of this are zeros. Okay, so that's how we have this diagonal lambda. And let's see what happens when I try to do this uh, A times S. 
right? So a times s is basically saying that uh, I have this a, and what is s? S is my eigenvectors, right? So um, my first eigenvector, which is v1, let's say v2, and so on and so forth, up to vn, all of this are my eigenvectors. So a times s is this a times v1, which is uh, uh, let's let's actually call them s1, s2, right? So to make things more clear. So I have written over here S1, S2. So let's let's call them uh, S1, S2, and Sn. Okay. So since these are my eigenvectors, A times S1 is same as lambda times S1 because lambda was the corresponding uh, eigenvalue. So it is A A times S1 is same as lambda times S1. A times S2 is lambda times S2, and so on and so forth. So what I got over here on the right hand side is same as s times lambda right so you can you can also call it s1 times lambda 1 because lambda is a scalar so you can put it on either side and uh, this is exactly same as s times lambda right and now that we have this equation right and let's say my s is also invertible right which usually is that's uh, I'll, I'll choose my eigenvectors which are orthogonal so they are all uh, linearly independent and everything if that is possible then i can find an s inverse and when i find s inverse i just multiply both sides with s inverse then over here i'll be left with a and over here i'll be left with i'll be left with s lambda s inverse which is in the same form oh, like here like here right so s is my p uh, lambda is my d and s inverse is my p inverse so i have found a diagonalization using eigenvectors and eigenvalues Okay, so now uh, we have mostly covered all the hard topics. Now let's talk into some lighter topics. So one is about norms. So uh, we are only going to talk about vector norms. Okay, so norm of a vector is in some way we want to find the measure of the magnitude of vector, right? So that is uh, done by measuring its norm, right? So usually we will do it to evaluate uh, uh, the error of a model which is like sometimes we want to use it for that and a lot of times for other kind of stuff also for example if you want to do some some sort of a regularization then also we can do uh, norms right so over here are written it is also used in the regularization process right so how do we find the uh, vector norms so one of the way is uh, p norm which is defined like this Right. So there are many different types of norms that we can define, but we are going to focus on this kind of a P norms, right? So it is what it is doing is that uh, every entry of this vector, it is raising it to the power P, the absolute values of uh, this that entry to the power P, then add all those uh, raised power numbers and then, and then take the pth root of uh, that entire number, right? So that's uh, the standard way of taking, uh, finding the P norm. Like, so if you have uh, p equal to one, then you'll be left with uh, adding up all the individual entries. So for example, if you have a vector, which is three minus two, one, right? In that case, it's uh, one norm will be three plus two plus one, that is six, right? And if you have a vector, which is uh, say four and minus three, and let's say if you want to find a two norm, Right. So what you will do is uh, take the first value, which is four, uh, take the power p equal to two, right? So four square is 16. And then the second number is minus three, minus three square is uh, nine. So this is 25 and then take the square root of this, right? So take one by two. So that you will be left with is five, right? So you have four minus three, then it's two norm is basically the length of the vector, which is five. You can actually find the two norm uh, just by doing this uh, x transpose x, right? So that's that's also another way of doing uh, p two norm. So p equal to two, that norm is also called the Euclidean norm, and it's basically the Euclidean distance from the origin to the point identified by that vector, right? So uh, having said all those things, let's try to do things in Python. So let's say we have a vector which is four minus three, right? So if you want to find the uh, L1 norm, then you can do this linear algebra dot norm, it's a function in linear algebra. 
and then pass on this vector and pass on the p value which is one right so if you do that then you get the l1 norm which is four and three seven and if you want to find the l2 norm so it is you don't even need to find uh, you use the same function but you don't really need to pass the uh, pass the second argument which is the p value because by default it is uh, l2 norm okay so if you do that you find the uh, norm which is five okay so now we are going to talk about the trace operator right so what is the trace operator trace is basically sum of all the diagonal entries of the matrix right so that is how you define trace it's you take all the diagonal entries and then add them together and that's what you call a trace of the matrix okay so how do you find the trace in python you have a matrix and you print the matrix if you don't if you want and then the trace of the matrix is very simple you just call dot trace on it and that's it right so that's your trace so if i have this matrix a and i just print it and uh, i just do dot trace then I get trace as five. 